Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of amount of substance, and in particular, RAM and RMM. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson one of five in this tutorial, based on relative atomic and relative molecular mass. This is the first in a series of five tutorials covering the topic amount of substance. Here are our key learning objectives for this session. We'll start by looking at some definitions, then move on to calculating RAM, and finally, we will calculate our MM and our FM. Here are the AQA specification points for this tutorial. Feel free to pause the video now and read through them before we begin. Let's look at the first specification point in a little more detail. We'll be discussing the terms relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass in terms of carbon-12. Here are the four definitions for this section. We'll look at AR, MR, RIM and RFM. When we define relative atomic mass, we always use an atom of carbon-12. We find the relative atomic mass in the top left corner, as shown here. The relative atomic mass of copper would be 65.546. We can see this here. The relative atomic mass is the average mass of an atom of an element relative to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. Carbon is used as the standard to which the relative masses of other elements are compared. And it has a relative atomic mass of 12. You can find the relative atomic mass of an element on a periodic table by looking at the number directly above the element symbol. The AR of copper would be 63.5. The relative molecular mass is the average mass of a molecule relative to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. It is the sum of the relative atomic masses of each atom within the molecule. Let's look at the relative molecular masses of these atoms as shown here. The relative atomic mass of nitrogen is 14. Chlorine will be 35. And oxygen is 16. However, well, let's work out their relative molecular mass. In the case of nitrogen, it would be 14 times 2. For chlorine, it would be 35 times 2. And for oxygen, it is 16 times 2. The relative isotopic mass is defined as the mass of an atom of an isotope relative to 1 12th 
of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. We'll now be looking at relative formula mass. Here, we can see that the relative formula mass of carbon dioxide is 44. And for water, it will be 18. This is the definition of relative formula mass. It is the relative mass used for giant covalent compounds or ionic compounds. An example of a giant covalent or ionic compound is MgOH2. Let's work out its relative formula mass step by step. First, we need to write out the elements that are present. These will be magnesium, oxygen and hydrogen. Now, we must write out the relative atomic masses of each of these elements. So for magnesium, this would be 24. For oxygen, this would be 16. And for hydrogen, this is 1. Now, we need to look at the amount of atoms. Magnesium, we only have one of, so this will simply be 24. Oxygen, we've got two, so we need to make this 32. And it's the same for hydrogen. Relative atomic mass is not usually written as a whole number due to the fact that it is an average of the masses of many isotopes. However, relative isotopic abundance is normally written as a whole number. Here, we can see the difference between the relative atomic mass and the relative isotopic mass. Let's look at how to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element step by step. The first step is to multiply the relative isotopic abundance by the mass of each isotope and add them to each other. We then have to divide by 100 and do a sense check. This is so we can make sure that the value seems right. Let's take a minute to look at this exam question. Feel free to pause the video here. We're going to work out the RAM of chlorine using the information in the table. The answer to this question is 35.5. Let's see how we got to this. Let's go through it step by step. Our first step is to multiply the relative isotopic abundance by the mass of each isotope and add them together. So here we'll be writing in 35 times 75 and we'll be adding this to 37 times 25. This should give us a value of 3550. Now we must divide by 100 and do a sense check. So we'll have 3550 divided by 100. This will give us a value of 35.5. We can do a sense check to make sure that the value seems right. 35.5 is in between 35 and 37, as we would expect, and it has a closer mass to Cl35, which is a more abundant isotope. Therefore, this answer seems fine. Now let's move on to our next specification point, covering the term relative formula mass. We learned earlier how we can calculate 
RAM using the relative abundance of isotopes of an element. Now, we'll look at the relative molecular mass. To calculate the relative molecular mass, or the relative formula mass, we have to add the relative atomic masses of each atom within the molecule. Let's work through this example together. Pause the video now and have a go at this question. We need to work out the RMM of water. Water has an RMM of 18. Let's see how we got to this answer. First, we need to write down the formula of the molecule. In this case, it's going to be H2O. Now, we need to write down the elements that are present in water and their relative atomic masses. So we have hydrogen and we'll have oxygen. The relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, whilst the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. There are two molecules present here, so we'll times the hydrogen by 2. Now we must add up all the relative atomic masses of all the elements in the molecule. This leaves us with 1 times 2 for the hydrogen. Add the 16 for the oxygen. This gives us an answer of 18. We've now covered both the specification points for this section. If you're unsure about either of them, feel free to skip back to that section and re-watch the video. We've now completed Lesson 1. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-Level Chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.